So the spike protein contributed to the myocarditis that we have seen ever since mass vaccination has started. Recently, a paper has come out that is looking at the molecular biology in detail behind myocarditis. This is a year later since we have discovered the problems, which was discovered very soon after mass vaccination has started. So imagine how like you can sometimes have to wait before you can really understand the science behind clinical events. So we're going to be discussing that in today's video. My name is Dr. Mikola Rashek of Merogenomics and let's get started. So the authors of this publication, they obviously took a bunch of patients who've been vaccinated with, all of them who were vaccinated with the Pfizer mRNA vaccine. And except one, one patient was um, vaccinated with Moderna uh, injection, mRNA injection. And obviously there was about 16 of them and all of them develop myocarditis. And they looked at variety of different profiles. So they looked at, um, they looked at um, their cells, uh, immune cells, what kind of pattern of immune cells they've had. They looked at um, what kind of antibodies they were producing. They looked at their viral antigens. So what does that mean? Basically, what is an antigen? Antigen is any biological substance that antibodies recognize. So of course, an example of that is spike protein, but they looked at a variety of different, different antigens. And they looked at cytokines, and cytokines are basically, mm, think of like molecular compounds released by immune cells, and immune cells use cytokines in order to in order to communicate with themselves and, and influence immunological response um, in, in essence. So then all of that can provide you information with what kind of immune response is happening in an individual. And of course, they compare that against 45 people who were vaccinated with Pfizer injections and they never developed the myocarditis. So then the question of course is, can we learn why potentially why myocarditis is happening in some individuals than others? And the take home message is that when it came to antibodies and T cell responses, they were pretty much indistinguishable between, between the two groups. So that didn't seem to be, didn't seem to be an issue. What the authors also looked at, and this was, I thought this was somewhat interesting. They also looked at auto -antib antibodies. So what are these? Auto antibodies are antibodies that we produce against our own, own molecular biological components that are, that are in our own body. So they will be attacking ourselves. That can happen, for example, if um, if a protein, if a protein that is a viral protein is somewhat bizarrely misfolded or folded differently, so that it produces antibodies that will then not only recognize the viral protein but it could also recognize mm, components of our own body. And mm, again, there was no issue there, no differential. No differentiation between between um, myocarditis patients versus those who healthy controls. When it comes to T cells, though, the one interesting difference was that the authors noted that some of the T cells, CD4 T cells, those are helper T cells that were involved in the process, they were expressing the specific molecule on the surface called PD1, and PD-1 can be a signature of T cell exhaustion. We talked about T cell exhaustion in the past, so that, that, that was interesting as well. And then finally, when it came to cytokines, the authors also were able to show that indeed the myocarditis patients had a different cytokines pattern than, um, than uh, healthy controls. And uh, in essence, basically, the cytokine pattern of 
these individuals with myocarditis resemble that which is seen as, um, I believe it's called multi-system inflammatory sy syndrome in children. We are talking about basically innate immunity cytokine pattern that leads to um, wholesale inflammatory issues that has been observed in, 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 sometimes can be observed in children. So clearly some inflammatory issues uh, that um, is being present in myocarditis patients. But the biggest surprise and the, the gist of what we're trying to get to in today's video is that, um, is that these individuals with myocarditis had an elevated spike protein and this specifically full length spike protein in their blood. So just for purposes of, of the conversation here, uh, the amount that was observed was approximately 33 picograms per milliliter. We discussed the amounts of spike protein in the past as to as to what could be expected, but this was full length protein. The, and here's what's the interesting part. They, this was nothing to do with, um, with neutralizing antibodies not working because those were completely fine in these individuals. They were working totally okay. The authors tested them. So this was interesting that neutralizing antibodies were okay, but they were not capable of removing the full length spike protein in this particular, in this set of individuals. And mm, S1 component was not present. It was present in some individuals up to three weeks, but this was found in both the healthy controls as well as, as myocarditis. And then it it is removed after sometimes, I believe it was seen up to three weeks uh, in, in these individuals. So definitely, definitely um, not an issue. It's just a full length spike protein that is absurd uh, elevated. And the others did not know whether this has to do with, uh, with um, the spike protein contributing to the myocarditis or not. So we cannot know whether it's pathogenic in this instance or not. The authors suspect that maybe it could be, but because myocarditis can be seen in other individuals that are post-vaccination with other vaccines that are not mRNA vaccines, including something like influenza vaccines, then it was suspected that perhaps perhaps this has to do uh it might not have to do anything with the spike protein and perhaps the elevated spike protein in the blood is actually a signature of myocarditis not a cause of myocarditis so this will still need re require further investigation but the take-home message here is that is that um spike protein has been observed finally confirmed that elevated levels of spike protein can be seen inside inside um, individuals with myocarditis. We'll see what it means in the long term and uh, whether that is causative or not, we'll still have to wait for further studies to find out. That's all I have for you today. And I uh, wanted to say thanks again for all your support as always. Thanks for all the questions. Thank you for, thank you for coming to the COVID Q and A events where I'm uh, getting a lot of hints as to what we, we should be um, focusing on in these scientific videos. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, everyone.